Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. From the church without judgment, we're back with a broadcast. It's going to be so wonderful. I'm really relaxed right now. I've been planning on bringing this word for about a week. And I knew that it had to come for it. It's called My Shepherd. Our shepherd. Today's short edification, my shepherd. He is our shepherd. God should be your shepherd. Today I want to talk about the good shepherd. He will always be ready to fight your battle. He'll help you. See, then there's hirelings those are the ones that are paid employees and depending on what their lot is or the coins that they're making, that's what type of effective service they'll get. But I want to talk about my shepherd. It'll be taken from Psalms 23. So Remnant, how are you guys doing? Hope you're doing well in this cosmos, this world. It's been crazy, lots going on. A lot of deceit, a lot of destruction, a lot of murder, a lot of lies, a lot of bitterness, rooted bitterness. But on another side, God's doing miracles upon miracles. My shepherd. Today we want to talk about an intimate relationship. We've all been in relationships, and if you're old enough and you get older and you you want to have those relationships. They're very valuable and we're not meant to just be alone. In, in the garden, God said he gave Adam everything, but he, he noticed he needed one thing and that one thing was a helper or it was a help meet. It is actually fleshier flesh and bone of your bone. It's that person that completes you. That is in Genesis, and it's always in Revelation. I'm going to pray, and then I want to get into this word. It is my shepherd. Father God, we thank you for your word is true. You are the good shepherd of Israel. Today, Lord, we ask that you hold our hand. Today, Lord, we ask that you would cleanse us once again of our iniquities, which are many, like the Apostle Paul said. Today, Lord, we're asking that you galvanize our heart in the full gospel. I ask, Lord, that you give us a manifold protection and wisdom and power. Holy Spirit, rise upon us. Rise upon me so that I can do what I can't do in the natural, but with the dunamis, we can do his will. Lord, your will is to tell those about the gospel. The gospel is the good news. The gospel is the love, the unconditional love of our Christ. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
How you guys doing? I'm excited. I'm gonna look at this right now. I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna come in and we're going to have some fun. Let's put down any anxiety we have. Let's put down any fear because most fear is something that's not even gonna happen. But we may be thinking about it. But today I wanna talk about a Psalm of David, Psalms 23. I'm gonna have a little short Bible study. I'm gonna break this down. It's gonna be organic. I don't know. I don't, the only thing I know about this is God is already here because the Holy Spirit ushered in his spirit and now we're all in union. It's the Trinity, the Godhead, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then there's us. But who's under us is the devil and the cabal. They're under our feet. We will win. We win in Genesis and we will win in Revelation. We just ain't got to the end of the book. We're getting closer. It is the new Adam. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the living and the dead. That's who he is. Psalms 23. I love this because we all want to be in relationship, but sometimes we be, we get out of order. We get out of order sometimes, so I'm going to share this with you. The Lord, verse one, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm in the, what am I in right now? I'm in the Amplified. I got the King James and the Amplified. I'm reading out of the Amplified. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. You see how he does that? David, see, the Lord, he says. We all know about the Lord, but he says, is my shepherd. That's an intimate relationship. And this is why he is David's shepherd and he is our shepherd. He's going to tell you about what the good shepherd does. He will always protect all of his sheep. And it is a good relationship because it says the Lord is my shepherd to feed. Number one, he will feed you. You can write that down. Remember, put it on your heart. God is our good shepherd because he will always feed you. You will never be hungry. Then he'll also guide you. He will guide you into the land of good and plenty. Feed, guide, and then it says in the Amplified, he's my shield. And he's my shield. He's my guide, he's my shield. So he feeds us, he will guide us, and he's my shield. And then the end it says, I shall not lack. Let's say that together. I shall not lack nothing. In the Hebrew, that means I shall not lack any good thing. You will never lack any good thing because you're in the kingdom of God. And one thing I want to show you about God's ownership or his kingdom, he has benefits. And the benefits that he have, he will feed you always. He will always provide for you. He's your Jehovah Jireh. He will guide you and he will shield you. He will shield you. It says, I, and he will shield me. And I shall lack nothing. That's the difference between religion and relationship. There's a scripture in the Bible where it talks about if you think you're religious, do this. Take care of the widows and the orphans and keep yourself unspotted from the world. That's if you are, think you're religious. But they were religious in Jesus' days and they're religious now and your religion cannot save you from Satan because he has his own religion. Satan knows the word of God better than me. He was with God up there above in the kingdom. He was the worship minister. I'm going to do a edification soon and it's going to be called the I will. Satan had seven of them. He's a narcissist. He says, I'll be like the most high. I will ascend like the most high. I'm here to speak the word to you today. He will feed you. He will guide you. He will shield you and you shall lack nothing because the report today is he is the good shepherd and his benefits 
are your benefits. You will be approved. It's it's it may be delayed, but God told me to tell you it is not a denial. You shall get the report of the Lord. And he says, you will not be hungry. I will feed you with manna from heaven. And then he says, he makes me lie down in in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. Let's look at verse two. I want to talk about, I'm going to have a sip real quick. Are y'all with me? He makes me lie down. That denotes that there's peace. How can you lie down in behavioral issues and darkness? He says, he makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. This is the Amplified. You're laying down by green pastures. That's mean it's plentiful. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. I'm going to show you what this really means. The tender grass is tender because even when you lay down on it, it won't hurt you. He cares about us that much. He takes care of the lilies, uh huh, the flowers and the trees and the birds. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all those other things will be added on to you in the book of Matthew chapter 6, 33. The tender grass. And then look at what he does here. The waters are of rest. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. His waters are waters of rest. I can prove it. The well in John chapter 4, there was a woman who went to the well. She was a half-breed. And he told her, this water that I have, you will never thirst again. We have all been thirsty because we've been in the flesh and we keep drinking different vanities of things and we're still thirsty because only God can heal those things in our hearts. But he said, I have water that you know not about and it will spring forth, shooting up or springing up, meaning it would come up out of the spirit of God and then out of your heart. If you receive him, something leaps. In John 4, 14, his waters are of rest. He has the living water, pure water. You think his water is of spring water? His water, you will never thirst again because it's springing up. It never dries up. I want to go to verse three. Then he says he refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the path of righteousness uprightness and right standing with him. It's with him. If we're in right standing with him finally, then everything else around you will start, the decay will come off and it will start being like honey. Not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. We have not earned anything on our own. It's a gift. That's why we should repent. Repentance is a gift, but he poured out all his blood. Verse Three, he restores our soul. I want to talk about that word restoring in the Hebrew. See, he restores our soul. He refreshes it. Then he restores it. Then your life is changed. Then he leads you into the path of righteousness while he holds your hand. That word restore means bring back. That word restore means return. That word restore means repair and re renovate. Renovate, if you ever had a home that you own or you rent, and they say we can't give it to you yet, but we have to renovate it. They're, they're stripping it down to the bare metal and they're putting in new appliances. God says today he is repairing your heart and he's re, re, renovating your mind so that when it's time, you're returning to him. He wants to bring you back into honesty. He wants to bring us into his safety, his strong tower. He wants to restore our soul, bring it back, but it won't be back like before. It will be in a place of restoration. You want to put Restoration in the comments. Let's look at verse four. I'm almost done. He says, yes. Though I walk through the deep sunless 
Have you been in darkness? This is what I want to tell you. The prophet has something to tell you. Yes, though I walk through the deep sunless or darkness, the valley of the shadow of death. It's only a shadow of death. It's really not death. We're still here right now. All the shadows you've been seeing, they've been doing witchcraft. But God says it's getting ready to ricochet back on them. He says, I will fear or dread no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort me. That's why he is my shepherd. That's why he is your good shepherd. He does this. In the shadow of death, it's only a shadow. The reason why it's only a shadow, because God is with me. That's what Moses asked him. By the cleft of the rock, by the mountain, Lord, I'll go and do whatever. But long as you go with me and can I see your face? The report was, God says, no man has ever seen my face and live, but I will do this for you. God showed him his backside and that was enough for Moses. It's enough for me. But God says the reason why it's only a shadow of death, whatever you've been gone through, I know it's hurt. I know it's painful. I know you want to quit. But God told me to tell you because I'm in the lion's den too. But we shall re we renew the report of the Lord. We win. The darks are coming, but they shall not prosper. He said the report is they're coming, but we will win because there's more of us than them. He is with us. He is with you because he is Emmanuel, God in us. He is our liberty. He is our hope. He is the Lord of the lilies and the valleys. Verse 5. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then he anointed my head with oil and my cup ran over. I'm going to read that again. He will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. I'm going to show you how. I just saw it. Because he said in the back end of that, he anointed our head with oil. And when you are put oil on you, you're slippery. Your protection came last, but really first, because when he anoints us, like the prophets anointed the kings, then you are anointed for kingship. That is your anointing. And then comes the overflow points. It points to the Lord. See, the overflow is for everybody. But when you get the overflow, that's when you tell them who gave it to you. You will tell the world that the Lord did it. The testimony today is it's not by might. It's not by spirit. It's not by might. But it's by his spirit and it's never by power. The power and the might is only in God's hand. And then he says that I'm protecting you and pouring a horn of oil on you and ordain you a prophet. Just start to speak his words. He says the things that were not as though they are speaking into liberty because he has overflow points because it points to him and he shall be lifted up and all men drawn to the Christ. He is the Lord. And then in six, and I'm closing surely. And it's called my shepherd because he's the good shepherd. Will you only work for money? Will you work if the money ain't coming in? Because God will fill the basket. He says not silver and gold, but get up. If you want to be made healed, if you want to be healed, get up, pick up the pallet and walk. The Lord is saying your crutches will go in the trash if you want to be healed. But if you want to be in that victim mentality, stay down. But a righteous man will fall seven times and get up, get up, put it in the comments, get up six, surely or only goodness, surely or only. Listen to this and I'm going to close surely or only goodness. If you follow the Lord in Psalms 23, like David, 
David was a man after God's heart because he was in the presence of the Lord more in the presence of humanity. Write that down. That's for you. It's free. Surely or only goodness. This is what I'm getting right now. If you want this, get it. It's in the light. Goodness, mercy, and unfailing love. That is grace. Unfailing love is agape love. Do you want unfailing love? Go to God and he shall give it to you. Shall follow me. It, unfailing love will follow me all the days of my life and through the length of my days. The house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. You know why? In verse six, this is an everlasting love. In verse six, this is an everlasting love covenant. In verse 6, it is the horn of oil. In verse 6, Jesus said in the book, in the end of Revelation, chapter 22, don't add anything to the book. Don't take away anything from the book. Because if you do, there will be a curse on you. God is telling me today, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And we shall, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever because of his everlasting love for us, because of his everlasting covenant that means you are in the presence of God for all eternity. Because in Romans chapter 8, in the end it talks about nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. Not peril, not death, not depression, not suicide, not witchcraft. Not things created by humans. Not money, not pride, nor vanity, nor murder, nor war. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I'm asking right now if we can come into this anointing. And we're going to pray for the family and we're going to get on out. Because my good shepherd told me to tell you, the family will win. Community, the devil came to Job and he tore up his family. The devil went to and fro. To and fro, looking for who he may devour. But the Lord told me to tell you that today there's a new reunion. And my shepherd shall bring us through the fire. Family today, there's a lot going on in the family. Families are being destroyed all over the world because Satan hates the family. That's in the book of Genesis. And then Lot got separated from his wife because of vanity. Job, vanity. But God says today, he's restoring you because he's feeding you, guiding you, shielding you, and you shall lack nothing. He's going to bring you back He's going to return you, repair you, renovate you. Father God, right now, I thank you. Renovate us, Lord. Come in to the house. Our house is our spirit. And renovate it. Clean it out right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, return to us our first love. Lord, bring us back so we can have liberty and let the shackles come off. Father, the family shackles must come off because Satan wants the family. He comes in to steal, kill, and destroy, but you said I come to give life and life in abundance. John 10.10, 10, the enemy. I rebuke the devourer, Father, the accuser of the brethren right now. Loose your people. Loose your people.
Father, I'm praying for the family right now. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that you would that you would put the horn of oil on the family. Every family represented man and woman with children, Lord, and they're being separated, Lord. I ask, Lord, that it could be a reunion in your will. Father, I don't know how long it'll take, Lord, but I ask, Lord, that you provide it, Lord. You're Jehovah Jireh. Father, I'm praying for that man that keeps trying and he keeps feeling like the rocks keep hitting him. As he keeps trying and trying, Lord, but I pray. And Lord, I ask that you give him an open heaven, that man that has a family and he wants it so bad, but the enemy is trying to take the family. Father, I'm asking, Lord, that you anoint him from the top of his head, Lord, right now. Father, I'm praying for the woman, the single mom, and the woman has been abused. I'm praying, Lord, that you cover the manifold protection right now. Father, I'm praying for the family. I'm praying for the children. I'm praying for those children that didn't ask for anything. I'm Lord, I'm asking you to touch them right now and heal them. Father, sew the family back together in unity and harmony and agape love. For you are the good shepherd and you shall clean them up. You shall pluck them out of the devourer's hands and you shall clean them up and put them back together. No, not like Humpty Dumpty, but Lord, your report today is, is you're restoring and bringing back things. We're in a season of restoration for some and for closure and loss for others. But Lord, the remnant, the remnant, we're coming out of Egypt, out of the desert in dry places. God says, I'm getting ready to rain on the remnant. I'm getting ready to feed them. I'm getting ready to give them a harvest, says the Lord of hosts. I'm getting ready to change their mind and they will be the apple of my eye again, says the Lord of hosts in the land of the living. Seek me, seek me delicately in this time. Seek me because I am the Lord and the land of the living and I shall do a new thing and the ears of the world shall tingle and be excited for some and others they shall lose heart and fear and drop down says him the father the son and the holy ghost in jesus name shabbat shalom where the spirit of the lord is there's liberty and remember remember he is our shepherd make him your shepherd because he is my shepherd because it is an intimate relationship never religion in jesus name we love you pour the blood on you the blood of jesus is the only blood that saves because he was and he still is the perfect christ the man god from israel amen we love you blessings